Nobody put me in an orange jumpsuit, shaved, shackled, or abused me, or raped me, or sodomized me, or videoed me for the gratification or pleasure of others later on. As you can see um, from what I'm saying, my experience was completely different to those who fell into the hands of the Americans. So that morning, a new change of clothes, so I set about washing the old ones. And one of the German girls took me into the courtyard and gave me a metal bucket and took me to a hand pump and she said, you can get your water from there. And I'm looking at this contraption which looked as though it had come from one of those old Western movies and I started cranking it. And eventually some water came out and I'm saying, this is amazing. How do they heat it underground? And she started laughing. She said, it's cold. I was given a pumice stone and uh, some soap flakes and, and I set about washing uh, my clothes. And I then hung them on the washing line in the prison courtyard. Within five minutes, I'm sitting, trying to enjoy the last days of the summer sun, and the prison governor came in, a great big man with a huge beard and really a very scary looking dude. And he came in, and in broken English, he said to me, he growled at me, remove those garments. And I'm looking, I said, it's my washing. Remove them now. And I said, I can't. It's my washing. I am washing my clothes. This is a washing line. We dry our clothes on the washing line. Well, cover them up. And I'm looking. I said, you stupid man. You've obviously never done the washing in your life. How on earth will it dry if it's covered up? So he stood there for a couple of moments and then he said, well, take those items down. And he looked the other way and sort of pointed. And I realized he was talking about my underwear. <laughs> and I said, no, this is the female wing of the prison. If you don't like what you see, clear off. He said, remove them. And I said, no, if you don't like them, you remove them. And I thought he was going to explode on the spot. He then went storming off. And he returned 15 minutes later with the deputy foreign minister of Afghanistan. <laughs> These people are about to be bombed by the most powerful country on earth. And a diplomatic incident was unfolding as a result of my underwear. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass the men here, but I mean, we're not talking anything small, salacious and lacy. We're talking big, comfortable Bridget Jones. <laughs> so the Deputy Foreign Minister said to me, will you please remove your undergarments from the line? And I said, look, this is the female wing of the prison. There are no male prisoners. The only men around at the moment are you two. If you clear off, there will be no men. By the time they're dried, nobody's going to be any the wiser. He said, yes, but the Taliban soldiers live above the female wing of the prison. And if they look out and see those things, they'll have impure thoughts. I'm looking at my underwear in a new light now. <laughs> I said, there's a very easy solution to this. He said, I knew there would be. I said, tell your men not to look out of the window. <laughs> no, no, that's impossible. I thought, I cannot believe this. You know, America didn't need to fly over in B-52s and bomb these people. They should have just parachuted in a regiment of women soldiers waving their underwear. 
and the Taliban would have gone.